Okay, it's the 26th of the 2nd, 2024. So the roof lining has been finished for some time now, maybe um, a year. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have uh, this first section as a, um, a description of the work and uh, how it went and the things I learnt about painting uh, a roof liner. And then once I've done that, I'll hand you over to uh, the work approximately or very, very roughly a year ago. So um, let's begin the, uh, the introduction. Okay, the number one thing you're going to have to tackle when painting the, uh, the roof lining is the smell and the odour. And secondly, the uh, labour intensity. Where you'll have to put drop sheets to uh, to get rid of that um, that foam uh, type of uh, sticky uh, lining. Uh, secondly, you're going to have to spend a fair amount of time putting drop sheets over the seats and um, over the dashboard and everywhere. So when you remove your lining, there will be this uh, sticky type of uh, residue that has to be removed with a sanding block, a fairly coarse sanding block, and then a sanding block that's not, that's a bit more fine. And because you're laying on your back doing this work, you'll have to put drop sheets over every layer that you, you take off until it's uh, prepared. Otherwise you'll get it all over your clothes. Uh, don't get me wrong, this work is long-term um, successful. I'm very happy with the work. Also, this car used to fog up when there was a lot of uh, rain and humidity. It no longer, um, you know, that moisture doesn't build up in the car because I think a lot of it was held in the lining and the foam holding the lining to the uh, roof lining. Uh, as a matter of fact, the other day there was a little bit of fog, but only at the front window and I had a look around there was none at the back it used to fog up very badly but um, not anymore so when it used to fog up I used to have to use the AC I've only had to do that once in a year in fairly unusual uh, um, damp conditions so the method is once you've prepared everything and taped up around the handles and and everything um, what you do is you keep on applying the paint until it won't soak up anymore. So there's a type of um, hard foam underneath the uh, roof lining and the glue. Or we'll call, call it the foam glue. And once you work your way to the actual roof lining, it will soak up, well, many coats really. Um, and once that dries, once you've got to that stage and it dries then you give it one more coat and that's that's what I had to do I use 1.5 litres in in an area of this size it's a station wagon um, but that's how much I used yeah so just to be try and be more exact I did have to give it multiple coats one two three maybe four I'm not sure um, once that dried then after a couple of days, um, I gave it another coat. Okay, let's uh, let's film the work. So we can we can see there that it's not absolutely perfect, but it's the same colour. I brought some of the plastic in. I removed a piece, or I had a strip off, uh, and I brought that in, and that was properly matched for colour. We've only got the one light from behind shining in so that will show up anything that you can see there we do have um, a better camera now I did film the original um, video that's going to be shown shortly with uh, uh, a phone with less resolution we'll say okay so now I just apply more light in there with my torch I'm 
from the rear door. May be able to see there where the lining didn't come off all that well and stuck to the uh, the ceiling. Okay, and there's a bit behind there. So I was showing that at the start of the original video that's going to be shown soon. Okay, that was around about that area there. This is a good bit of work. This has really saved my car. You know, I do things the way I think they should be done with the money I've got and the time I've got. Okay. So I did have to, about a couple of months ago, re-tape up and re-paint around here. Okay. I taped up along the plastic, all plastics, all handles and everything. Alright, the ceiling's not perfect, but you get the idea and um, it'll be long-term successful work. So I'm very happy with it. It was labour intensive, but just don't forget that odourless paint and that you'll have to put drop sheets on. Um, wear eye protection when you're sanding because this stuff could get in your eyes. Okay? So uh, if you've got the spare time, it doesn't cost all that much money. Um, it's a long-term fix, whereas if you get the roof lining brought down and a new uh, lining put on it, there's no guarantee that will work long-term. Okay? So all the best. I hope this helps with your decision about what you're going to do. So the video will start very soon, the original video. I hope you enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe. Okay, this is a year 2000 Camry. Um, what happens with these cars is that the uh, lining comes down from the ceiling. It's got a type of uh, um, sponge type of material that uh, disintegrates with the heat and uh, this lets go. It's fairly common in uh, domestic cars. Um, you can see it coming down there. And so looking at the internet, an option is just to take the whole ce um, ceiling lining out and uh, reapply the cloth, spray it with an adhesive and reapply the cloth. Um, I'm not going to do that. I don't have the time. Um, so what we're going to do here is remove the material. I'm going to use a sanding block to sand back the, uh, the foam. There you can see here where I've, I've experimented. For some reason, maybe the cloth wasn't there. I'm not sure why. But uh, this is good here. And the plastic's been removed. So maybe the foam was stuck onto the uh, material when it was applied. Um, so I've made a start at peeling this back. I was going to remove all the parts, but uh, I don't really go, want to go that far into it. We'll just have a look at uh, some of the, uh, the other parts of the, uh, of the ceiling. So it's a bit dark. I've got a torch now, so uh, you can see here that this part of the line is uh, coming down. Uh, this has happened since it's been, or a lot of it's happened since it's been in storage, which is about a month now. And you can see here that it peels out from the join and balloons out. So... Um, make an indentation here and you can see that the foam's fairly thick so it seems to be coming off whatever is in installed like the lights and the handles it should just peel around it um, so I'll just probably have to take these uh, 
window visors back. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's make a start. So just to show that it will come away, I'll just peel this back. Okay. We'll see how it goes around the handle. So that'll peel off around the handle. We can see. And that's the mass of uh, uh, decomposed foam with little bits and pieces, maybe from the impacts over the years. But yeah, I haven't got time for this and uh, I don't want to risk taking it to a professional shop and the same thing happens in uh, two to five years time. I just, uh, I need something reliable. Um, so I'll peel that off and uh, I'll use a sanding block like this. I might be able to, to show a little bit of the, the method. So just sand it back like so. And you can see, you start to hear that it, it, uh, it hits a, uh, a hard base. Okay, this is a fairly coarse uh, sanding block you get in uh, a hardware shop. My phone's not working, but this is a very old uh, tablet type of phone I'm filming on. I think it's 750 pixels, but uh, that's okay. We can see there's the foam there. That's that's what I'll be attempting to get throughout the entirety of the of the ceiling of the car. Um, so then, what I intend to do is uh, possibly roll on some paint. The type of paint I haven't decided yet. It may be exterior uh, house paint, just because it'll stand up to higher temperatures, but. Uh, I'll have to look into that, but the first thing is, you know, I've, I've put the drop sheets down because this stuff's fairly sticky. Um, I just don't want to risk it bonding to any material. So this is a sort of a once-only uh, once job, just to remove it, and then it's over and done with, and uh, it shouldn't come back the only problems that I can think of right now is that this could turn into this foam but uh, you know I don't think so I'll try and show that with some light how that reacts okay so you know this could uh, decompose into something similar to that but I don't think so I think this foam was attached to the uh, to the ceiling lining and then as I say I'll seal it and hopefully that'll be it so uh, that's the introduction I've got plenty of drop sheets as you can see okay so 2000 uh, Toyota Camry actually uh, I can show a uh, 1995 uh, Isuzu Holden Rodeo. It's not unlocked. I oh, beg your pardon, it's, the door's locked, but can't really see. So this is five years older, and we can see that it's very good uh, lining on the ceiling. It's just material stuck to the ceiling. You don't need foam. Uh, I know the domestic market would be different, but this is really good and it's completely bonded there. It is possible to do it properly. Okay, so this is a before and after video. So I'll, uh, I'll come back to you when the work's done and I'll explain what I did. Okay, it's about four or five days later. Um, tomorrow will be the first day of uh, 2023. 
Um, I'm happy with the work. Uh, what I did was I used uh, um, one and a half litres of this uh, weather shield. Okay, I'm just going to try and get a bit of focus on that. I'm, as I say, I'm, my phone's not working and I'm using a tablet. Um, but this is uh, exterior paint. It's the best quality I can get. Um, it should be UV and heat resistant. Um, it, it is uh, acrylic paint or plastic based paint or uh, water based paint. So it will soak into the, uh, to the material and bond it. Okay. Um, this probably won't apply to you because all interiors, uh, interior of the cars are different. Okay, but what I did was I happened to have this plastic moulding off the, uh, the back of the car and I thought instead of using the material, okay, um, I just bring this into the shop and he scanned this and he, uh, and he got this colour. Okay, so one and a half litres, um, two coats. The applying the first coat is um, it takes a lot. Okay, because as you roll it on, it uh, it soaks up the paint. And but it's only when that first coat dries that um, that you get the full coverage. Okay, so again to be a bit more clear, um, I would apply paint until really it doesn't accept any more. Let that dry and give it a second coat, and uh, and then you should be good to go. Uh, now, what I did here is um, I taped up around the plastic moulding and around the uh, the door handles and the light. I removed that light. Okay, but that's the finished product. It looks pretty good. Um, there are a few troublesome areas. Uh, one of the troublesome areas have virtually disappeared. Um, this was one here. You can probably see two indentations there, but that's nowhere near how it looked before. Um, another area, surprisingly enough, is, uh, is down here. Um, in the first part of the video, I ripped the material off, and I stopped about here, I think. But a bit further down, it did bond. So uh, we'll have a look at that now. Okay, on this camera, I'm not able to actually focus, but we can see just around here, it's a little bit... Uh, it did take away the top coat of the, uh, the paint, but really you can't see it. And, you know, I'm very happy with the job. So... Um, yeah, we can see where I taped up there around these uh, these visor locks. Um, as you can see in the corner here, uh, I'm not going to worry about that area. That's where the visor's uh, anchored to, and that'll fold back and cover that. That's To me, that's okay. Okay, so I'll just uh, do a bit of filming from uh, a bit further away, and we can see that that's... You know, to me, I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm optimistic about that being a long-term uh, a long-term solution. I'll go to the other side of the... Uh, I'll go to the passenger side, which is the left-hand side here where I live. Just while we're at it, there'll be a future video of uh, the fixing of this paint. It's a little bit strange how there's uh, a pattern to it. Um, the front's okay, but it's just, uh, that, that I'll, I'll have to look into what I'll do there. But anyway, back to the, uh, the subject. Okay. And that's, to me, that's, that's nice. In fact, that's how they should have done it in the factory. Okay. That's, I'm really happy with that. Okay. There's a bit of pattern there. Um. That could be either places that have soaked up more um, more paint. I think that's flat. Uh, might be able to see a bit better on an angle. 
But yeah, that's uh, to me. I don't think I'm going to get any more trouble f from that. Okay, the front's very good. Um, from the back, that's it. From the back. Okay. Okay, so uh, now it's just to uh, take the tape off, put the reinstall the light and the visors. Um, I'll show a finished uh, job. Uh, what you'll have to do is put multiple um, uh, drop sheets down. Uh, the first one, as you remove it, please protect your eyes because otherwise you'll get it in your eyes. Um, also, it is a type of sticky foam and it will stick to your clothes um, I just shook my clothes off and like you're going to destroy your clothes or anything like that but as it comes down you can't lie in it because you get it all over your clothes the next day so you have to put another layer down um, then I brushed it off with a brush and that left a residue and so I had to cover that so that's three layers of drop, drop sheets um, now I do have some notes here uh, so Yes, protect your eyes, uh, wear old clothing. Um, uh, yes, I did show the area where the, uh, the the material bonded to the ceiling just there and it, uh, it left a bit of an indentation. I got some uh, spray on glue and I glued over that area um, just to make sure that it all bonded and, and it did, there's no, there's no bubbling. There is some undulations in the back of the ceiling there, but uh, uh, apart from that, uh, it's a really good job, and I'm I'm confident about it. I used a sanding block and a small brush to uh, to clear the residue. Um, for sanding, I used I started with a very coarse uh, sanding block like this. Um, I finished up with a, a smoother one. Now, yes, I, I'd recommend that that would be the best way to do that. Um, then I went over the ceiling with this brush, brushing around the, uh, the door handles and all the fixtures to get rid of anything that was there still. Um, there is no, after doing that, there was no residue on the ceiling or bits and pieces in my paint or anything like that. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, I said that this was water-based paint. Um, this is empty, this is half full. Um, and that's for a station wagon like that. Um, now, uh, I did get one litre thinking it would be enough. However, it wasn't. And I found, found myself having to go through the, uh, the Christmas period to uh, um, a store, a hardware store to get the paint. Um, so, you know, as you see here, um, a sedan would be about from there to there. Could you do that with one litre? Or oh, that's tough. Uh, with a sedan, I would get one litre and I would get the second litre if I had to. Okay, but for a station wagon, definitely uh, two litres. So in summary, yep, uh, you know, only time will tell, of course, you know, with a lot of my work, I'm doing it for the first time. It is experimental. Um, I fully expect this to be a huge success. Um, please, before you uh, do this work um, with painting the, uh, the roof lining, um, please read all comments, read the description, I'll leave clues there as to how the work's going. Uh, if there's nothing there, please drop me a line, ask me how it went, okay? And I'll let you know. Uh, if this isn't a success, it'll either be taken down or um, there'll be something in the heading. Just like all my videos, please read the, the description and watch the full video before commenting. That would be uh, greatly appreciated. I hope this uh, helps you. Please like and subscribe. Uh, for the masking tape, I just used, I found that this sort wasn't very good, it just 
seemed to come away from the uh, from the moulding, from the plastic moulding. But the blue stuff here, and and this is here. I found this to be uh, a really good product. Okay, so this stuff was good. This stuff wasn't so good. It did bond in some places, but not others. It's not really reliable. But the blue, the blue one here was good. Okay. Um. So, what I used to apply the paint was anything from a very, um, very small brush. Where is that brush now? Um, can't see it. A uh, very small, thin brush to uh, to this size brush around the uh, the door handles, etc. And I worked it out to be uh, a bigger width around the uh, the cutting areas. And I found this type of sponge roller to be the best. I used a foam roller, but uh, I've, I've found this to be better, and it does add a stipple effect to the ceiling. So uh, much well more in line with the material that was there yeah so it's this type of um, whatever they say it is there okay that's the type it's got the uh, type of material to it okay and this uh, this foam roller here I found not to be like as good okay so yes, I hope this helps. Um, I know my videos are longer. Um, I'd say, well, you can use a faster uh, play playback speed. Um, okay, so I'll leave it there. Please like and subscribe. So this is why I put the drop sheets down because of this type of uh, sticky type of foam. Heat affected uh, time and glue effective uh, affected <laughs>